Hello and welcome to episode 85 of Vokta Gaming. I am your host, the vocal terrorist Jesse Rain, and we are here with some exciting games because we are MLG. Okay, first up on dual site, we have a Terran vs Zerg. Introducing first our blue Zerg player, he is FX Opens Lenok. And spawning in the west, our red Terran, it is the Emperor himself. It is Slayer's Boxer. So, I know we've had a quite a bit of Terran vs Zerg lately, but this is going to blow all of those out of the water right now, because this is going to be fantastic. The previous Terran vs Zerg, Lelush Prodigy, was all about Lelush's play, it was all about how the Zerg can really cope with a poor Terran. This is just gonna be exciting. I cannot wait to get into this. Full disclosure, I have not seen this match. However, I do know the results of all of the matches we will watch from MLG. MLG, I have got a ton of replays to cast from it. That's going to take us well into the 90s of these episodes. Of course, once again, I am planning something quite fun for episode 100. But okay, so some background for people of you, uh, for those of you rather who don't know about these two players. Okay, FXO Lenox currently using the name Timber here because he was over at MLG and he didn't blah 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 blah. Nobody cares. FXO Lenox was a guy who's been around for a very long time in StarCraft 2. Um, he hasn't always hit what I like to think is his full potential, but he's always been around. He's been a perennial Code A. Occasionally Code S player, and really, really lately, he has started to show just why he is so good, making it all the way to the finals of Code S, which was absolutely fantastic. Of course, he has been defeated there by Jack G, when he got certainly very, very deep in MLG as well. Uh, no, uh, no spoilers here on how far he got. If you watched MLG, you already know, and uh, it was pretty exciting. And of course, the Emperor Slayer's boxer, one of the greatest, definitely the most well-known StarCraft Brood War and StarCraft One players ever, switched over to StarCraft Two, started his own goddamn team, and is right now two raxing and bunker pushing FXO Lenok. Lenok, oh you poor, poor guy. This is going to be tough to deal with because he has pulled no drones to deal with it. So this hatchery is pretty much a goner. There is not a lot you can do. Speed has only just been started for Zergling, so he's not going to be able to uh, come down and take this out any time soon. And we have more and more on the way. We do have a few Zerglings out, but they are going to do nothing right now against the start stepping micro of Slayer's Boxer. So I'm afraid this hatchery feels like it's going to die. This is good. This is good here with the uh, the Zerglings. What are you doing with them now? Okay, that's the wrong thing to do. What you wanted to do was bring them to about here and cut off all the reinforcements of Boxer uh, to stop him reinforcing this. Instead, he's going to be able to fill the bunkers and, in fact, build a third. Okay, bye-bye hatchery. Lenox going to come around and try and slip in through here, but Boxer is wise to it, and those, oh, the Barracks going to get there in time, this is so close, no, they don't, the Zergling slip in, and oh, Lenox, what a nicely timed bit of pressure there, this hatchery does die now, however, and he could be in a bit of trouble, but these links are in here, and should be able to do at least some damage right now. They are just trying to avoid getting surrounded by these SCVs, but all this is costing Boxer mining time. Meanwhile, back here, we have not a lot going on. These bunkers are well defended, but right now we can't really push up into the main either. Zergling's now streaming out. Going to try and run straight through, in fact. Not even bothering with those bunkers. He's just going right for Boxer's base. Wow. Um, not too sure if or how this is going to work. Obviously, no Baneling Nest means he can't just... Oh, in fact, he does have a... What the hell? Okay, I got excited. Okay, Baneling Nest. He's going to Baneling Bust this front door down. If you have enough Banelings, you can target the barracks and take down both supply depots at the same time. So, ooh, this is going to be scary. Now, the question is, can Boxer hold this front right now? This was a good opening from Boxer, and if he can defend this, 
Oh, but he doesn't. Two bailing still alive. Both supply depots down. The box with supply capped. So again, these bailings going to try and come in and do some damage. Wasted there, really, against the barracks. Not the best of plays there from Lenok. And wow, okay, Boxer is definitely ahead at this point. Because that did not do it. Look at that, he killed one worker. Used all those banelings to kill one worker. While well, he lost a hatchery himself. Sorry, uh, Lenok, but you are behind right now. Wonderful, wonderful start from Boxer. Why he hasn't moved some of these to Bailings and just busted the bunkers like he should have done a long time ago, I do not know. But it looks like he is going to take this down, so finally he will be able to re-expand behind this. But that cost him a lot of time and a lot of units. As this bunker now dies hideously. Along with the Marines inside, so this hatchery is going to go back down. But we are at 8 minutes 24 now. And that is a long time to go without a second base for Zerg, especially using so many of those bailings. Look at this. This is what I want you to look at right now. 39 food for Slayer's Boxer to 30 of FXA Lilock. This is a position where you expect the Zerg to be up in supply by about 10 to 15 supply at least. And right now he just isn't. We have an evolution chamber going down. So he looks like he's going to want to get some fast upgrades. Either that or he's preparing for the potential of Banshees, but there are no Banshees on the way. There is nothing but Barracks right now. This one, with a Tech Lab going down, is for Combat Shield, as this small group of Marines are making their way up towards this expansion hatchery of Lenok. If he can take it down a second time, then damn, Lenok is in trouble. But no, choosing to go right into the main base instead, going to get himself some Queen kills, perhaps. Going right for the Queens. Drones being pulled, but brilliant, brilliant start step micro. One queen goes down. He wants to be start stepping these marines again. But right now he just doesn't need to. Going for these drones. Finally the links come in. They are going to shut this down. Boxer's attention was elsewhere. Because he was expanding to this location. And that is going to give him a nice economic advantage. We just check again. The workers killed. We're now to 12 workers killed. For Boxer to 5 from Lenok. And of course... Uh, uh, quite a few of those, three or four of those were the ones building bunkers at the other end of the map, so Boxer is not going to feel their loss as keenly as Leonok will feel the loss of his drones. We have a bunker going up at home for Boxer, that's going to keep him safe from any uh, roach timing attacks. Now of course, uh, can't really go for those anyway, as he is so far behind economically, but I do not begrudge him from building that bunker whatsoever it's just a solid solid idea to do meanwhile back at home again boxer is building siege tanks for siege mode gonna help uh, protect his bio against the bailings and we have a couple more barracks going down too ground carapace for the zerg is nearly finished we have a starport going down that's just been started and again a small group of marines is here to do some damage to lenok but there are bailings right now at home for Lenok. I think Lenok should be safe if he micros these, if he controls them correctly. And in fact, yes, Boxer pulling all the way back to the uh, the mini uh, the mini gateway zone, Arga Tower. Here come the Zerglings. Not going to do any damage. See you later, Zerglings. Of course, had Slayer's Boxer been on move command, that would have uh, really ruined his day. But he's not silly enough to do something like that. Stimpaks now uh, on the way as well for the Marines. It's going to make them even better. We have Marines in the bunker. And don't forget, you can stim Marines while they're in the bunker as well. That's something a lot of lower level Terrans do tend to forget about. It's something I've forgotten about in the past and can be really, really handy. We have Zerg melee attacks level 1 on the way now. Going to make those Zerglings slightly more effective against the upgraded Marines. But of course we have infantry weapons level 1 on the way now. That's going to counteract the Zerg carapace, the Zerg armor. And we have medevacs as well. So we could see a drop orientated play from Boxer. That's what I would expect from him. Going pretty heavy bio. You expect to abuse the mobility of bio. You expect to use these medevacs to drop the back of your opponent's bases. Maybe snipe drones, maybe snipe a bailing nest, get a couple of queens in there too. Only just now the second uh, gas in the main being taken by Lenok, along with the two at the expansion. 
and in fact getting a macro hatchery as well which is the correct idea at this point because I don't think a third up here would be safe right now so it makes sense to take that macro hatchery and just use it for drone and unit production okay so he is gonna make a small push when the first medevac is out uh, looks like just gonna defend this location in fact expanding over here nice moves by boxer yes this is gonna be a small push this is nice you have three tanks you have the one medevac that you can use for drops and or healing um, the tanks of course are there to siege up just out of range and protect the bio from banelings meanwhile we have a couple of lings just out and about scouting see the bunker going down here and they're going to pick off that SCV so this orbital command does turn around and go right back home but we have an engagement and oh using bailings on siege tanks and then on all the marines the siege tanks did not siege up quick enough at all and boxer loses everything oh you needed to be prepared for that boxer his attention was taken for just a second with this order command and the zerglings down here and because of that his siege tanks were not sieged up in time so all he has left from that attack is one medevac and three hurt marines wow okay this the tide is now turning back into Lenox's favor he's able to knock this third up now after he stops that attack meanwhile boxer is getting infantry weapons level two infantry armor level one and vehicle weapons level one as well at the same time FXO Lilac is getting Burrow and Melee Attacks level 2 also a Spire uh, likely to see some Muters out to help counter these Medoaks and also do some harassment of his own he knows his third base is up he knows it's going to be weak to Muter harassment for a while and in fact Lilac is expanding again to here unfortunately for him I think this Medoak is going to spot it in fact it is it's going to fly straight past it so if Boxer is watching he can drop his units there and in fact he is watching um, he can either drop his units there and force a cancel, no, nope. but he does know it's there now so it's not as safe anymore. Uh, this medevac needs to be careful, right now there's nothing on the field there that can take care of it. But the Zerglings will follow it and look, yes, he has in fact dropped these here, Leenok needs to cancel this right the hell now. Leenok, are you paying attention? Yes, Leenok has cancelled it. That is a pain but it's not as bad as if he had lost it completely. Meanwhile, this full medevac is flying about everywhere, trying to find extra bases. And in fact, now it's just going to drop, and it looks like keep an eye on this gold base. Um, I'm not sure why, because Leeluk is not expanding to it. Two bailings borrowing there at the entrance. This is a Leenok strategy. He loves to borrow bailings about the map, and he is so so good at it. He just always knows exactly where to put them. He seems to have his eyes on them at all times so he knows exactly when to explode them and that can really kill a bio Terran's push dead in its tracks. Okay, right now both men are on three base. So we are three base versus three base and we have Thors coming out in time to counteract the muters which is very very nice. <coughs> Thor's of course not the greatest anti muter thing. Muters can magic box and take them out, but with some decent bio support as well, they're going to take, uh, they're going to tank any bailing hits. They're going to do splash damage to muters, and in fact that medevac and that drop goes down. So Lilok may well choose to expand out to this goal base. But wow, Boxer is powering through his upgrades. Infantry weapons level two finishes right now as infantry armor level two and vehicle weapons level two is started. Meanwhile, Lenok is massing an army, but right now he is still down in supply. And there is a drop here stopping him from expanding here. The Marines stim and do get some damage off. We have Bailings here now as well. All he needs to do now is... Oh! Targets down those Bailings very nicely. But see you later, Marines. See you later, Medivac. That is over and done with. And right now, we have Lenok setting the creep spread over half the way to Boxer's base but he has a ton of marines back home and uh, a decent number of siege tanks more than enough to deal with any bailing aggression along with Thors to help again as I said against the muters and the bailings you know do some damage to this scouting overlord as well but meanwhile Lenok is taking the gold base and attacking Boxer's third and he forces the lift right now SCV's going down along with these missile turrets this orbital command is going to try and get away but he does have the muters there to help 
destroy it. The question is, can they get it in time? Meanwhile, Boxer just going for a push right now. He's not going home to defend. So we could see a base trade scenario as Bailing Speed is on the way, along with the ground armor level 2 for the Zergling. But no, no base trade scenario. Lenok is on his way home right now, but, but not before this Siege Tanks and Bio do a ton of damage. Away goes this hatchery. That is not surviving here. So Lenok loses that base. He's about to lose the gold as well. He wants to cancel that. Because there's no way he can get there in time. Yep, cancels that very, very nicely. Again, better than losing it. He still has the macro hatch in his base, do not forget. So technically, he is still on three base. Trying to expand again uh, to a third location. Trying to expand back down here. I'm not too sure how well that will work. Boxer has shown that he is looking out for that at all times. Vehicle Weapons level 2 finishes now, so these sea tanks are going to be even more effective. Oh, but he's... Oh, nearly loses one. But not quite. That would have been a lovely snipe from those muters. As it is instead, they have to flee because that Thor is there. Now we have the two borrowed bailings here, but there is not much bio here right now for them to damage. The bio is very, very nicely spread out, by the way. I'd have liked to have seen Linux maybe snipe this medevac, but the Thors are very, very close. Need to run away. Oh! Borrowed bailing goes off, taking down a few marines. And what's so good about the Borrowed Bailings, of course, is not just that it kills Marines like that. It's going to force Boxer to spend scans that could be mules. That is as simple as that. Okay, we have infantry weapons and armor level 3 going down now. So Boxer is powering out these bio upgrades non-stop. Right now, Leonok, though, has taken this, uh, this third base down here. Since he cannot expand to this upper location, it is too well defended. It looks like instead he's going to come down and deny the third of Slayer's Boxer yet again. I think he's got more than enough to do so. Needs to roll in. Oh, the Bailings could have done a lot of damage there. I don't think the Sea Tank could have got them all. And the Marines were all clumped up. But Lenok chooses to withdraw. Whether he just cannot afford to uh, lose those units right now, I do. I'm not too sure what his decision making process was. Because going back here is just going to get him hurt. Right now, Boxer is. Far too entrenched here. And in fact, he's going to lose a muter here. Or in fact, possibly two. No. Just through poor unit control. Linock is slightly falling apart. He's still struggling to get up quite to max. But he's going to do some harassment with these muters. He's coming into the base of Boxer and attacking the upgrades. Brilliant idea. Say goodbye to your level 3 upgrades because those Ebays are going down. Fantastic timing there on the Muta harassment. Tries to get that starport, does make it burn, but it's not going to escape. Oh, but the Muta's taking a lot of damage from those missile turrets. Meanwhile, Slayer's Boxer is using this to advance forwards and attack the Macro Hatchery and Queens of FXO Lenox. He could be in trouble right now. This is so tense. Boxer is just inching forwards with these siege tanks, splitting his marines wonderfully to deal with the muters, to deal with the banelings. And this hatch is going to die out. Those zerglings took the full brunt of that. And in he comes now, bringing everything. Muters and banelings and queens coming in. Oh, everything and boxers is dying right now. There was just too much stuff for Lenok. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. Brilliant attack there from Lenok, but of course, this base does go down. Trying to take Boxer's gold base, as it were. But Boxer does shut that down. Meanwhile, we have a huge flock of muters here. They are going to do a ton of damage if he can use them correctly, which is what he is trying to do right now. He's trying to just get in here, snipe off things like tech labs. Oh, going to catch some SCVs! They do get defended though, and again, Lenok is forced to pull out, unborrowing his banelings that were there just to catch anything. Going to roll forwards and burrow even closer, in fact. Oh, that's nice. Going to try and bait the Marines out, perhaps, over the top of these borrowed banelings. If he does that, they're going to take a ton of damage. They're going to die hideously. And so I want to keep an eye on this. 
He is re expanding up here, but this is where it is out right now. Catching a minimap, catching a few tanks as well. Before again the Marines force him to back off. And again, trying to fly over there, just trying to get Boxer out of position, trying to get him to walk over those borrowed banelings. Meanwhile, he is building a ton of stuff back here, getting the Flyer Carapace level 2, that's the armor upgrade for the mutants, going to allow them to withstand more hits from the Terran army. And now they are flying on home. Okay, we have a sensor tower right here. That's a brilliant way to cope with muta harassment. Now we can see exactly where they are at all times. We have one SCV just paddling around. I'm not too sure. Just scouting perhaps to see if Lenox taken that gold again, which he has not. And now we have Mutas versus Marines again. Trying to snipe that command center does force a cancel on it. Nicely done. And for the first time since that two racks, Lenok is now ahead in supply. I know it's not much, but uh, it's definitely better than nothing. And wow, this SCV is getting a ton of scouting down. I don't think Lenox noticed it. In fact, it's just getting to sit there and watch the base. That is <laughs> um, very strange, very unexpected. Oh, we are about to have an engagement and a half, though. Or perhaps not. Both armies backing off very wisely. I'm not sure who would have come out of that better off. Meanwhile, we have this command center trying to go up again. But the Zerg is just going to push in through here instead. Taking out that sensor tower. Very nicely done. Totally undefended. And again, going to move in here and attack the planetary fortress. SCV's trapped right now. If the bailings can get in against them, but they cannot. Oh, that's so close. So many SCV's going down. The planetary fortress goes down and he's losing all his SCV's. I am losing my voice. Wow. And this command center needs to be cancelled again, but it is not. That gets killed which is terrible for Boxer and once again Boxer looks like he's just going to push forwards with this Thor Marine Siege Tank drop play while the Mutas come in here and try and take down this base but there are still a lot of Marines here and Mr. Turrets to defend so perhaps going home would be the correct option here Boxer with this elevator play lifting Marines up into the main base of Lenok and losing your main base can be terrible losing all these structures Evo Chambers going down, Spire will go down, Sporting Pool will go down, uh, the Lair will go down, so you need to rebuild all of those and that takes so long. Meanwhile though, Lenok is expanding to uh, Boxer's former third, which I like very much. He's also taking the goal up here, but the Mutas are coming in now, sniping some of these sea tanks at the back. They're going to take this one down as well, so that is very, very helpful. Meanwhile, everything in the main base is now dead. We have Lings and Bailings coming in to destroy these Marines. And when this shuts down, I think Boxer may have to get out this game. Because I'm just not too sure how long he can keep going at this pace for. If Lenok can keep denying a third. Right now it's 114 supply to 63. And we have more hatcheries going down for Lenok over at the goal. He can rebuild his buildings just fine. But right now, if Boxer cannot take and hold a third, he is going to run out of money so, so quickly. He has 25 minerals, and right now, zero mineral income, as you see. And that is a huge, huge problem. Because when this army goes down, he is not going to be able to remake any of it. And so he is not going to be able to defend against an attack from Lenok. This is his last group of units now. And there we go, Fungal's going down on them, all the Marines dying. See you later, Slayers Boxer, because FXO Lenok is going to take this game, guaranteed. Lenok, what a turnaround from failing to deal with the bunker pressure to completely wiping out Slayers Boxer's army, taking him down to 17 supply. If this third base goes down now, that is going to be game over, I guarantee it. There is nothing else he can do right now. It's one Marine on the map there. And here goes this base. See you later, Mule. That is so much energy to waste. And Slayer's Boxer GG's. And Lenok goes 1-0 up in the MLG match. Oh, wow. Okay, you are all sick of me talking. So that's going to wrap it up for today. I will be back tomorrow with Game 2 of Slayer's Boxer versus FXO Leonok. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you all next time.